If you highlight and contour and your makeup ends up looking like this, then you're doing it wrong. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use concealer and contour to get this natural, flawless finish. A mistake commonly made when we're applying concealer and contour is not understanding why we're highlighting and contouring. When we highlight and contour, we're adding concealer on the areas to help brighten up our skin, and then we add contour to help structure the skin. So it's important to pay attention to your face shape and where to place the concealer and contour. One of the biggest mistakes is applying a concealer that is way too light under your eyes to highlight, and not using one that is closer to your skin tone first. It's important to to start off with a concealer that is closer to your skin tone to help hide the discoloration underneath your eyes and on areas on your skin that also have discoloration. So first you want to select a concealer that is closer to your skin color and that's what you want to place right underneath your eyes and that will help hide the discoloration under your eyes and it's going to help brighten up your skin so that you look more awake. If you use a concealer that is too light and you blend it out and you have discoloration under your eyes, when you blend it out it's going to give you a gray and ashy finish and also when you take a picture with flash it's going to reflect that white washed out look which you don't want so it's important to apply a concealer that's closer to your skin color such as this elf concealer this concealer is in the shade deep cinnamon so as you can see a concealer that is way too bright on my skin shows up as very light and very ashy compared to one that is closer to my skin color it still helps to brighten up my under eyes but at the same time Time, it still looks skin like and it doesn't give me that super washed out look so when we highlight and contour it's important not to just follow what somebody else is doing but it's important for you to understand your face shape so if you have a very round face shape and you have creasings around your nose area and your cheeks pop out like this it's important to place the concealer only on the inner and outer portion of your eye instead of bringing the concealer all the way down around your nose area doing that will help prevent it from creasing around your nose area but if you have more of a flat face then you want to place the concealer all over your under eye this will help brighten up that area a little bit more and if you don't have creasing around your nose area then you can bring the concealer all the way around your nose all the way down towards your mouth area this will give you more of a brighter look it's also going to help lift your face up and give it a better structure as you can see after blending out this side I'm getting creasing around my nose area this area is starting to get oily so you want to avoid placing so much concealer around this area especially if you have a lot of pores around your cheeks area that area is going to get really oily and it's going to move around so instead you want to focus on applying it only around your under eye area try to avoid the concealer around this area and around your nose area but if you don't have problems with separating around this area of your skin or you don't have creases around your nose then you can apply your concealer all over your under eye so when it comes to contour it's important to pay attention to the shape of your face. That will determine where to place the contour and how to structure your face. If you have a square shaped face and your face is really structured, which means you have a high cheekbone and you have a structured jawline, it's important to really make sure that you're contouring your face to bring back that feature. In order to do that, you wanna use a contour shade that is two to three shades darker. You don't wanna use one that is way too dark because then it's not gonna look natural. If you have a wide forehead, you also wanna to place the contour there to make sure that you are structuring your forehead as well and you also want to place contour on your jawline area this will help lift your face a little bit and it won't make your face look droopy a common mistake made when applying contour is placing one that's way too dark for your skin and then placing a lot. As you can see, this color is just way too dark and when you blend it out, it doesn't look natural and it doesn't give your makeup look a skin-like makeup look. So instead, you wanna use a contour shade that is closer to your skin tone, maybe two to three shades darker. This will give you more of a natural finish when it comes to the contour. It's going to add that structure, but at the same time, it's going to look like your skin because it's closer to your skin color. 
And also you want to pay attention to the placement of the contour. So you want to first start by feeling your cheeks to make sure that you're placing the contour right where that bone structure is. You also want to do the same thing for your forehead and then just place a little bit for your jawline. And when you're blending it out, you want to completely blend it out so it does not show. Now to blend out your contour, you can use a brush or you can use a damp beauty sponge. If you are going to use a brush, you want to use a dense brush because that's going to help blend out cream contours better. Placing a small amount of contour will allow it to completely blend out and it's going to give it that natural finish. So when blending out your contour, you want to blend it upwards so that it structures your face. If you blend your contour downwards, such as this, it's going to go all over your cheekbones and won't give you a structured look. Instead, you just want to lift it upwards and blend it closer towards that concealer. Doing this will give you more of a natural finish compared to this side where you can see that contour has gone way below my bone structure. To blend out your forehead, you also want to blend it outwards towards your hairline. So when it comes to setting powder, you want to use a setting powder to set the concealer that is closer to the concealer color. You don't want to use a setting powder shade that is way too light. As you can see on this area I used a way lighter concealer so me adding setting powder on top of this light concealer is going to make me look ashy so instead you want to opt for a setting powder that is either translucent or you want to use a finishing setting powder that is really going to give you a smoother finish but you want to use one that is closer to the color of that concealer so the one I'm using is this one by Milani. It's a translucent loose setting powder in the shade medium to deep because the concealer that I used was deep cinnamon. And as you can see, this one gives me more of a natural finish compared to this one where it's going to look really ashy. Especially if I take a picture, it's going to make my makeup look washed out, which you don't want. But even after finally learning how to highlight and contour to give a flawless finish, sometimes we make mistakes when it comes to other parts of makeup. And that's why you really have to watch this video right here because in this video I show you the biggest makeup mistakes made and how to fix them and if you really learned a lot in this video I guarantee you you really love this video KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's